two birds, one cup. Sorry, two birds, one grinder. The Cafe Sing Orca is a hand grinder that has not one, but two different sets of flat birds. Yep, you heard that right. I have so many issues with this thing, but would I still recommend it? Before we get started, Cafe Sing reached out and offered to send us the Orca, no money exchanged hands and they've had no say in what we've put in this video. A huge thanks to Benki Brewing Tools for helping with all of the logistics. If you're buying any coffee gear, then use the link in the description below to get 5% off. It also helps the channel. Okay, so flat burr hand grinders are already super rare and this one ships with two burr sets. So pure curiosity is what led me to make this review. As always, I'll try and cover everything that I think is important to help you decide if this grinder is for you or not. Now, one last piece of information before we dive in. You may have come across a grinder named Potu online, which looks identical to the Orca. And I found this to be really dodgy. So I asked Cafe Sing about it and this is what they said. It's near impossible to verify this information to be true, but I just wanted to share it with all of you before we go ahead. Okay, so when it comes to aesthetics, the form is quite familiar. I mean, it's near identical to say the Easy Press or K-Max, but that's about where the similarities end. I mean, from a distance, especially if you ditch this tacky red band, it honestly looks okay. But take a closer look and you'll start to see some issues. I'll get to the build quality, but the knurl grip area, the texture and the adjustment ring, the font, the spacing of the grind size numbers, all kind of contribute to making the grinder look a bit cheap in my opinion, especially considering the price point. Overall, it just feels like it's lacking attention to detail and refinement across the board. And unfortunately, this trend kind of carries over to build quality. Okay, hang on a minute. I just found out that our video Learn to Pour won a Spraji in the best coffee film category. Thank you so much for all your support. This one was super fun and really hard to make. So we're stoked that it's our biggest video to date. I think we should plan a huge giveaway to celebrate this victory. So get subscribed so you don't miss that. And also check out the pouring video if you haven't already. Okay, back to the build quality. On the plus side, it is all metal and doesn't feel flimsy or anything. But after using grinders from brands like Easy Presso, Kinu, and even Time More, everything just feels a bit rough around the edges. For example, the external adjustment ring works fine, but it is a tad mushy and has some play to it. Taking the handle off requires a little tug of war. It's not smooth and doesn't have that satisfying click of the magnet that confirms it's in place. The catch cup is quite light and I don't particularly like the sound that it makes when you're screwing it on and off. It's not as bad as nails on a chalkboard, but definitely trending in that direction. On the inside, things look a little better. We have these coated burrs, one set of regular flat burrs that are more espresso focused and the other set that are these wild looking ghost burrs for filter. Now, there are two interesting things in here that I want to talk about, both of which I think are very relevant to what the Orca delivers in the cup. One is how small the inner radius of these burrs are compared to say other flat burrs, which means you're essentially squeezing out a little more cutting surface area without having to increase the outer diameter and making the entire grinder bulky. The other is the auger and pre-breaker section that helps crack and break the beans into smaller chunks before entering the burrs. I'll come back to these when we talk taste. So yeah, with build quality too, it's a lot of these tiny things that kind of stick out and dull the overall experience, if you will. But now let's look at the UX. All right, so what is it like to use the Orca? Well, when I first saw that it was a dual burr set, flat burr grinder, I fully expected it to be fiddly and gimmicky, but I was honestly surprised. It is super simple to swap the burrs out, so much so that I wouldn't mind doing it on a daily basis to say do an espresso in the morning and a filter in the afternoon. As for how the burrs taste, I'll get to that. But in terms of the UX of burr swapping, it's really easy and intuitive. Check this out. Set the grinder to one, remove the catch cup, and then unscrew the lower nut. Pull out the rotating burr, the spring and the washer. Turn the fixed burr clockwise to loosen and remove that and then just do the reverse with the other burr set. Just remember that the raised side of the washer faces up. That's it, super simple. Now, grinding coffee with it, that's a whole other story which I'll get to in a second. It has an external adjustment ring which is very convenient and something that we almost expect from hand grinders these days. I just wish it had fewer numbers and used subdivision markings instead. Here, the numbers feel really cramped and the fact that there's a little play means that you're never quite sure exactly where you are. Calibration is fairly straightforward. Tighten the lower nut all the way when using the ghost burrs and your finest setting should be one. With the espresso burrs, set the dial to one and then tighten the lower nut until you hear the burrs rub, then back off one click and you're set. 
The handle is quite nice and comfortable to use. The catch cup, I'm not a fan of. Surprise. Other than feeling a little light and cheap, there's a weird lip on the inside that holds back so much coffee it drives me up the wall. To make things worse, it's like the coffee has been super glued in there. No amount of tapping or even bashing this catch cup seems to dislodge these grounds. Anyway, let's talk about the grinding experience. When it comes to hand grinding, in my opinion, there are three things that sort of determine how enjoyable or not it is. One is how easy it is to grind and this is sort of determined by the ergonomics and the burr geometry. Two, how quick it is and three, how it actually feels, the feedback, and even the sound, to be honest. If you're wondering how ease of grinding is different from feel, then let me explain. The J-Max is pretty difficult to crank at espresso settings because those burrs are quite aggressive, but the feedback it gives you of the beans being crushed is very satisfying. We talk a lot about the tactile aspect of products here on this channel, and this is even more important with something like a hand grinder. So coming back to the Orca, it's fairly easy to grind, which is great. If you've used the Kinu or the J-Max, then this is easier. It's also pretty quick, but there's a catch. It's really fast for the first 90% of the grind and then obnoxiously slow for the last 10%. Say you're grinding 18 grams of coffee, then the first 16 or 17 grams will be done in like 35 to 40 seconds, which is very acceptable. But the last few beans will annoyingly take another 40 seconds to a minute. This is super annoying. There is a little hack that can save you 10 to 15 seconds and that's to flick the handle towards the tail end of the grind and spin it using the body like a cowboy's lasso. This will help push the last few stubborn beans through and get everyone's attention. And lastly, we have feel and this is where things start to get kinky. Sorry, things start to really fall apart. This grinder vibrates a lot. And unfortunately, it's neither soothing nor arousing. It's just plain jarring. And the moment I start grinding, I can't wait for it to be over. The filter burrs are a little more bearable than the espresso ones, but all in all, the Orca is just not fun to grind with. There's also this weird disconnect between effort and output. You know the feeling of being on a high gear while cycling uphill? The pedaling is easy, but you aren't really getting anywhere. Anyway, Let's look at what it delivers in the cup to see if it's worth enduring this mild form of torture on a daily basis. Okay, so far, it's kind of looking bleak, but we should talk taste. Let's start with the espresso burrs. They're pretty good. It's kind of fun getting a proper flat burr profile from a hand grinder. These burrs are also not super blended. They do tend to lean a little more towards a traditional style of shot, but there is some clarity there and a good amount of sweetness and texture. I really quite enjoyed the shots that I've gotten from these burrs. I pulled shots with this alongside the Mino XL, the DF64 with the stock burrs and the 078 and it held its own. When it comes to filter, I would use it in a pinch but it's nothing to write home about. Now coming to the ghost burrs, these really surprised me in a good way even though they were lacking something that I really enjoy in my cup of coffee but I'll get to that in a second. Let me try and describe these burrs to you. The brews they've produced have been very juicy and while there isn't a ton of separation of flavors, I really like how cohesively they're presented. Unlike more traditional burrs that tend to blend all of the flavors and present primarily chocolate and caramel notes, these tend to highlight more delicate notes. I was most surprised by how forward and present the florals were with these burrs and they really made me appreciate this Gesha from Wendelbo in a whole other light. If I had to separate brews into broad flavor categories from say dark and heavy to light and delicate, we'd have chocolate, dark chocolate, caramel, roasted nuts, etc. at the bottom. Then you'd have dark ripe fruits and cooked fruits that are really sweet above that. Then we'd have acidity from say citrus fruits and even unripe fruits and berries. And lastly, right at the top, we'd have the subtle florals. With these burrs, it's almost like the bottom chunk and most of the acid chunk are just missing. Now this brings me to one of the issues with these burrs. The elimination of these chunks can sometimes leave brews feeling a little lacking. Some people call it hollowness, but I don't think that word is fair to use here. These do a really good job at presenting a rather unique and interesting profile. The catch is they don't work on all coffees. And if you're an acid fiend like me, then you're definitely going to miss that vibrance and tang that burrs like the SSP multipurpose bring to the cup. That being said, I've had some really nice cups with light roast and I'm pretty sure there are a bunch of you out there that would love these burrs. Hopefully I've done a decent job communicating what I experienced in the cup. Now, one thing that's important to note about these ghost burrs that I haven't seen mentioned on any other reviews is that they're specifically designed for coarser grinds and larger doses. And by coarse, I mean coarse like 900 plus microns at the finest setting. For some context, most people brew their pour overs between 400 and 800 microns. So I would say as long as you're doing doses larger than 20 grams and you're agitating or slowing the brew down in some way to increase the contact time, you should be fine. 
I just wish it went a little finer. One thing that I found really fascinating is the shape of the particles that these ghost burrs produced. They're really rounded like tiny balls. Compare that to say the multi-purpose burrs, which produce much flatter grounds that almost look like shards. And we also looked at the 078 grounds, which were kind of in between. I know there's some research being done on this and I'd love to dig deeper into how the shape of grounds affects extraction and flavor profile in the cup. If that's something that you'd be into, then let me know in the comments below. And maybe I can reach out to Jonathan Gagne or someone to help me out. So yeah, when it comes to what the Orca delivers in the cup, I honestly can't complain too much. And this is arguably the most important aspect of a coffee grinder. Now, going back to what I spoke about in the build quality segment, I think that the larger cutting surface area could be helping a little with the grind quality. I say could be because I can only speculate as bigger burrs aren't always better, but a lot of the times they are. What I can say with more certainty is making a difference, and there's a lot of science backing this, is the auger and pre-breaker. Both slow feeding and pre-breaking have shown to produce tighter particle distributions, which are quite evident in the cup. Having this in the Orca is definitely a big positive, and I think a big reason why it's able to deliver really tasty cups of coffee. So let's look at price and if this grinder is worth the money. The Orca is currently listed at 289 US dollars on their website, and that's not cheap. The DF grinder folks have also recently thrown us another curveball by launching the DF54 at a ridiculous price of $229. The coffee grinder space is insanely competitive and quite saturated at this point, so brands are having to work that much harder to stand out, and strangely, the Orca manages to do that. Even though this review has been fairly brutal overall, the weird thing is that I still think this grinder is worth considering. I know, it's absurd, but it offers something truly unique, and even with all of its shortcomings, it manages to deliver where it matters the most in the cup. And while you're compromising on build quality and the overall look and feel, you are kind of getting two grinders for the price of one. So if you're in the market for a hand grinder and you're somehow able to overlook or live with all of the issues that I just highlighted, then you're gonna enjoy some really tasty coffee with flavor profiles that you can't quite get with most other hand grinders. And with that, I think it's time we wrap this one up, but now I'd love to hear from all of you. What do you think of the Orca? And do any of you already own this grinder? I would love to hear what your experience has been like. Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and brew our arms safe.